Hey, Jen here. I'm so glad you're here. And I just thank you if you're returning or if you're somebody that's new and stumbled on my channel. Um, I did a video last week about the um, my journey to proper diagnosis after being misdiagnosed for 16 years. And tonight I wanted to talk about um, things that I've found over that course of time that have helped me. I do suffer with chronic pain due to my con um, my conditions. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It causes chronic pain and it, I have multiple comorbidities associated with the Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, so I am in pain 24-7 to some degree, whether it's mild or, you know, ranging to severe. So I uh, was always one that didn't want to be on any prescription. So I tried almost well, literally everything. Now at this point, there's more options out there, but when I started, there wasn't as much. So there are like a couple things I haven't tried, like biofeedback's one, but I think that's the only thing. Um, and maybe there's gotta be something else, obviously. There's new advances every day, but anyway, so I just wanted to share what I personally have found that helps. Um, you know, everyone's different, everybody, response to things differently everybody has different you know everybody's individually so obviously what works for one may not work for everybody so this is just what helps me um and I, I hear so often and I myself also have um experienced it with the current climate and you know pain patients having a hard time especially if pain medication gives them great relief and they have exhausted all of their efforts or all of their measures that you know, they're having a hard time getting their medicine. I understand. I've been through it. So I, that's another reason I wanted to share so that, you know, in case you're somebody that hates researching or, you know, just needed help knowing what might be a good option for you. Um, I'm just sharing my experience. So maybe you can decide if it's worth it, you know, for you giving, getting some more insight. So, um, you know, of course, like even with me, none of this takes away my plate, my pain completely but I have a full regimen as I'm sure, you know, if you're watching this and you have chronic pain or, you know, you love somebody that does, none of it takes it away completely. But if you can get, you know, any decrease, it increases your quality of life. So just wanted to make that clear. And obviously I'm not a doctor, so definitely ask your doctor. Don't just take my word for it. You know, ask if it's something that you can, I'm sorry, I've got to adjust back. Um, you know, make sure that it's something you can safely take and it doesn't, you know, uh, it's not contraindicated -indica with any of your medications or anything like that. So, um, so I have several types of pain condition or several, well, I said that several comorbidities with Ehlers-Danlos, but I have, um, neuropathic pain and somatic pain. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but neuropathic pain, of course, is nerve pain like migraines and occipital neuralgia and somatic would be deep so like and it feels like a constant aching and not an example would be tendons so like a, a, a ruptured tendon or uh, joints um so like arthritis uh tendon i mean i'm sorry um canker like in another example would superficially would be canker so that's just gives you an idea um it's actually the most common this is the, the most um widespread pain that I have because of my allergy and loss, but fractures fall into that, strains, cancers, burns. I wrote down examples. It can be like a dull ache or burning, throbbing, shooting, squeezing, stinging, soreness. So with that said, um, I only just said that so that maybe, I know, hopefully if other people are watching this that don't have Ehlers-Danlos and are trying to find other alternatives, that's why I mentioned that. If that describes your pain quality, maybe it will help you decide. So, um, as far as natural supplements, and I'm going to list these off, but I will list them below with the spelling and maybe even a link if I can find them to where to purchase them, uh, or where I purchase them anyway. Um, now all of, not all of these I keep in my daily rotation, but at some point they were helpful. Um, <clears throat> if it, even if it was like a short, uh, short term deal, I, I felt that because it was, you know, helpful at all that it was worth sharing. So I, like I said, I didn't want to be somebody that it was ever on prescription. So I started with natural supplements. I exhausted all of my alternatives before I was ever, ever even tried pain medication. So there's a lot on here. Um, turmeric 
is for chronic pain and it I gotta say it's fabulous I keep it in my my rotation it is one of the most uh, powerful supplements for pain and anti-inflammatories I didn't want to like bore you with all the details but it's it's readily available online and it's it's really good I like I just always take it helps me with in, uh, inflammation of my SI joints uh, I love essential oils, so I'm just going to list the essential oils that I've found helpful. Clove oil, um, helpful for toothaches. I think most people probably know that. Wintergreen oil, I have that in a couple of blends that I have, and it is 85 to 99% of methyl salicylate, which is the same component of aspirin. So, you know, bypasses your stomach so that you don't get the and um, you know the the gastric upset like I can't take NSAIDs anymore um, so for people like like us that can't it's a great alternative uh, white willow bark that's in a couple of my supplements capsation I don't know if I'm saying that right um, it temporarily desensitize nerve, desensitizes nerve receptors called C fibers which causes the pain response and it helps with soreness it helps with migraines cluster headaches um yeah wait i wrote that my the mix the turmeric that i take has capsation in it so i will link that below um <clears throat> but i so i don't i mean i know the turmeric helps because i've taken it alone but with the cap the capsation it's like i don't know it's the combo or what but it helps tremendously for me uh peppermint oil helps sore muscles, toothaches, joint pain, skin irritation, and headaches. Um, also helps nausea. I think that's, I mean, that's the way I knew of it before. Um, fish oil, and so omegas, um, you know, and there there are different omegas, so the, I know the three sixes and nines. Um, but uh, fish oil, I keep in rotation too. It helps with inflammation. It also helps with, so, so it, helps with joint pain obviously but it helps with headaches is it, i found in the research and skin irritation um but i do notice a difference if i don't have the the fish oil and omegas uh ginger ginger root is an anti-inflammatory um i had taken it for nausea but i again it's in one of my supplements and so now i'm like oh okay well there you go guess it's helping more than i realized uh magnesium glycinate um you know if you've done Bought, re bought magnesium or done any research on it, you've seen that it um, magnesium comes in many forms. The form that I have found most helpful for migraines, inflammation, um, it, my head pain is magnesium glycinate. Uh, magnesium chloride and sulfate is the form I believe that they put in Epsom salt. So, you know, the Epsom salt like Dr. Teal's, which I love. I do that at least once a week. I need to do it more. Um, magnesium, there's magnesium malate, which I've taken, I want to say that one was a gel that I purchased. Um, so it was topical and it helped with muscle pain. Okay, uh, bromelain, bromelain, it's from a pineapple and it helps, I'm sorry, I keep looking down, but I can't remember all this, so I've got my little list, my notes. Um, it's from a pineapple, helps inflammation, um, arthritis. I've got arthritis in my wrists and my neck and my back um, and I'm telling you when I was on this and this was right after a surgery um, it, it helped like I felt better obviously not 100% but I noticed a difference so I, I, I it was helpful um, TMJ arthritis I don't know if I said that um, okay medical marijuana um, you know it, I know not all the states are, are medically, or I mean, I'm sorry, it's not legal in all the states, but, excuse me, um, it is here, and I've tried it, it does not, again, it doesn't take my pain away completely, but it, it helps a great deal. Um, I think the problem with a lot of people is that if you're in pain management, you can't do both, so it's definitely, like any of these, something to check with your doctor about, but... It, it, it helps. It doesn't help as much as um, my pain medication, but it's right up there. I'd put it probably at second place. Um, Arnica, which you can buy at a um, 
like I, I think that now you, I know you can buy it like on Amazon. Uh, I think you can buy it at CVS and then like at I don't know Whole Foods. You know any any nutritional like supply store. Um, I use that post op and also after my last wreck due to my, my chiropractor suggested it. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's, it's really good. In fact, I think the arnica I had had bromelain. Or, I don't know if they were together. I took them separately, but it was, it was great. I remember wanting to stay on it. And, um, I don't know if it's something that you can do long term or if it would just be better like post-op, but it's something to ask about. Um, B complex. I, I stay on that. It's something I can't do without. Caffeine, um, obviously not everybody can um, take that on a regular basis. Therapeutic mattress, uh, we have a sleep number and it, you know, I, I the only reason we got, we're able to get that, you know, and like with any of this, I don't know, it, it is costly and, you know, a lot of insurances do not cover this stuff. So it, it gets, it gets really frustrating because it's like, I mean, gosh, can't do everything, but um, we got a good deal on a sleep number and it's helped a lot because like my husband needs a firm mattress and I need really soft and since we got this mattress it's helped my uh, back issues and my hip issues. Uh, therapeutic pillow I put, I have one for my hips, my bursitis um, and it's great. You can get them on Amazon too. It's a knee pillow. Um, fluids, always with, always with water, 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 it's so good for you. So. Moving on to the alternative um, therapies that I have done, and I guess this is where it gets expensive, probably really, the, the, the more expensive um, acupuncture. It helped, um, and I just couldn't keep it up long term. I, I wish the insurances would cover it, but acupressure, I know a lot of chiropractors do it, helped a little bit. Um, chiropractor, I, it helps a lot. I. I wish that I could go for more than just my SI joints and my tendons, uh, my tendonitis and my like carpal tunnel in my wrist. Um, I, you know, if you have Ehlers-Danlos, if, especially if you have neck um, things going on, so like any instability, uh, spinal fluid leak, truly, you know, it's, it's my neurosurgeon and my geneticist caution against ever seeing an, a, a chiropractor, so please just be careful. I know there are uh, very gentle manipulations that can be done. So you might ask about that, but uh, massage. I like, obviously it's great. I think everybody loves massage. Um, I had that like full body massage. And then for my uh, TMJ, they did uh, something called vapor coolant spray and stretch. And it was great. It helped my TMJ so much. Uh, yoga. I think it's great. I love, it's great. So uh, water aerobics helped with my muscle pain, um, so did yoga, so did massage, uh, wa uh, pain psychology, I, that was something I tried more recently, and it um, was great, really, because, you know, I mean, anybody that's living in chronic pain knows it doesn't just affect you physically, it affects you, you know, mentally and emotionally, it affects your relationships and your sleep so many things and it's like you know i mean uh which i support groups are critical it's just great to have somebody else to talk to that really helped me when i was in it and i want to say that i was on medicare when i was seeing her the only reason i don't i didn't i'm not going in it right now is because i did stay in for a while and it helped me i got the benefit out of it and so i was able to stop going but um i'm on social security disability and medicare covered it so i feel like as far as what I know about Medicare, if they cover it, it seems like a lot of insurance companies would. Exercise, I put, but a little bit. Um, I think for me, it was, I have, I have to be super, super careful. It doesn't help, like, it absolutely doesn't help relieve pain. I put this down as far as, like, it helps to, it helps to deal with it. It helps to cope with it. Sort you know, sort of like the pain psychology, so. Uh, elimination diets. I did the Alcat and the Zytoscan and they revealed all of my food sensitivities. I cut them out and I always did feel better when I eliminate 
you know, I, I, I immediately, that's what I mean to say, I, I immediately feel better when I eliminate the foods that I am sensitive to. Um, and the Zyto scan, I want to say, includes, like, chemicals that you're sensitive to as well and other things like allergens. So I put in plant removal because my fibro, uh, my algae did get so much better after my implant removal. And that is mainly, for me anyway, it was mainly a pain disorder. Um, physical therapy. Um, it's just, I mean, <laughs> it's painful. Like, you know, it depends on the type, I guess, that, that you're getting. But um, the kind that I've had before that did ultrasound therapy and like the like um, electrodes, that was the most helpful. Um, so, and you know, any any strengthening that that did help me. So, bracing, I wear obviously this big guy, and then I have my SI joint belt that I wear, and I like I wear uh, that one. I I don't have to wear, but it helps my SI joints tremendously. I have a wrap that goes around my arm for my tendonitis that helps my my arm my arm it's worse than my right arm and it helps a lot um I also have a mouthpiece for my TMJ um which I will not sleep without at all I would consider that a very I don't know if everybody would but ice I have so many ice packs it's ridiculous ice helps me it helps numb the pain uh, electrical stimulation, I put that, like I was referring to my um, neurostimulator that helped for half a year. To me, that's good. I think that was worth mentioning. Uh, Botox, the first round I had was helpful. So a lot of people find it helpful for migraines. Uh, the platelet-rich plasma injections I'm currently receiving and the stem cell injections, it does take three to six months, but I, I am seeing a little bit of improvement already. So I felt worth, worth mentioning, and I know it is controversial. Um, insurance doesn't cover it, so not not for everybody, for sure, for sure. Um, nerve blocks definitely helped temporarily. Uh, ultrasound therapy that's that was done at physical therapy, and it was nice, very nice. Medications I've taken, so I mean I've, I've been on so many that helped. I'll I'll. If you, if you have like a specific question, then just feel free to, I'll try to link my Instagram and like my Facebook, feel free to message me there and I'm happy to answer anything. Um, or if like, I don't know, if you have just a question about, have you tried this? I just don't want to list like every single medicine <laughs> that I've taken. That would bore everyone to tears. Um, IV infusions, so for migraines, um, my old neurologist before he moved, he, he called it the Kaplan cocktail. It had DHE, uh, Reglan, and Benadryl, I believe, and it did help a little bit. Um, I, I, that was when I, and I, maybe like, I think it had some sort of a, a pain medication in it also. I, I know that it did. He just think he moved away a while ago, so it's hard. I can't get my record, so I don't know what it was, but I think, you know, a lot of neurologists probably do offer certain cocktails at the ER. IV infusions or cocktails, um, facet joint injections, facet joint injections, temporary, but did relieve, you know, temporarily. Trigger point injections, like for mild fascial pain syndrome, it was nice. And it didn't so much help my most severe pain, but definitely in my upper back, my or my, you know, uh, deep muscle pain is, it helps. So I think that would be good for fibromyalgia. Um, epo, epidural steroid injections. I think I'm, I'm sorry, scratch that, corticosteroid injections. So uh, I received that for my tendonitis and it was helpful in both arms. You just can't continue them long term. So that's something you'd have to discuss with your orthopedic uh, doctor. But the epidural steroid injections, I, I took off my list because of the risk um, that they pose. Uh, there are a lot of uh, risks that are that can that can happen so SVG block um it, i had it done at an orthopedic office but my neurologist does it now and it helped for a couple of days with my migraines and this is before i knew that i had instability and more structural things causing it so i've heard great things for other people's um, situations that don't have structural things going on uh, stretching i think that you know stretching is fabulous and you could do that at home. great so, anyway, 
Thank you so much for listening. I try to go through that as fast as I can. I really appreciate you listening if you stuck around for all that. And I hope in some way that it can help you. Um, like I said, I'll list, as, I'll list it all below. Um, and try to link if it's a product, you know, that I bought that's available. Um, but we just need all the help we can get, I feel like, as chronic pain patients right now. And... You know, I, I utilize a lot of this in my daily life to get through. Um, I, I, pain medication helps me the very most at this point. Well, this helps me the very most. I take that back. Um, but pain medication is a part, unfortunately, not unfortunately. I just mean it's hard to uh, come. You know, to the climate. That's all I'm going to say. I'll stop rambling, but thank you so much for listening. And, um, I really just appreciate you sticking, sticking by and, um, I hope that you'll come back. Thank you.